Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 At the time we felt that World War Congress was a state of its own. I will come to greet you properly later. We grew up hoping and praying that everything we want, aspire, wish for ourselves as a people will come via World War Congress. But somewhere along the line, we don't know what happened. I remember when Chekwas Ogeri would come to see me in London before coming to America to attend one of these events. And that was the motivational factor for me to be here today, to address you. Because regardless of whatever may have happened before, you still hold the key to our salvation as a people. I have said it, it's on record. Any day America wakes up to its responsibility, by which I mean our people in America, then will be saved as a people. You have what it takes to set us free. That is the essence of my address to you today. And I do apologize for having been here all day. We were running the program. Um, I should have been here, of course, earlier. And I'll, I'll be here until the end of the program because I'm amongst our people here. I have an already prepared speech. Hopefully, it should run close to that very 15 minutes we're talking about, or even less. The reason why I have come here is to address some of the issues that Dr. George was mentioning and also the very able moderator here who spoke earlier. Everything he touched upon is something that I wish to elaborate upon myself. We are in one almighty mess as a people. Almighty mess. I have seen your houses here that are very beautiful. In London, we live in two by twos. I think, um, this place here is about um, two bedroom flat. <laughs> very, very tiny. Back home is even worse. We have people here who are very comfortable, people who are very, very, should I say, saturated with the new things of life, but people back home are suffering indeed. We must do something. We expect more from you, all of you in America. That's why I'm here today. And we'll start with very great humility and submission to the will of the Most High Chipotle Gabriel in it. On you with to address this very noble body. In fact, I never believe that we're standing in front of what we come to where I am today. I stand before you here in Los Angeles, California, because you are the children of light, you represent light. As uh, New Soldier was saying earlier, maybe some of us don't know who we are. That is what gets me upset to go. Only if I say this all the time to our people, only if you know who you are. Maybe one day you realize that you're not that is why we should not be in Nigeria. The first place we'll get to that later. Each and every one of you here, I admit your presence. I present those of us here in the high table, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, those who spoke before me, those who will speak after me. There will no Mujinek. I greet all of you. I suppose some of you will be wondering what I'm doing here, standing in front of you. I have come here to tell you about the kingdom of heaven called Biafra. That is why I was born in the first place. Without Biafra, I wouldn't have been born. The reason why my father married my mother is to give birth to me, that I may worship the good Lord in truth and honesty in a free land called Biafra and nowhere else. That is why we exist. I don't want people to misunderstand who we are and what we represent. I respect Igbo land where I come from and the culture which I was raised with. But I know that Biafra is critical and central to all of us. Because when we say Biafra, it embodies everybody born by a woman that ties two piece wrapper. That's the sense of Biafra. Once your mother wears two piece wrapper, you are a Biafra. 
these are the things that we must acknowledge when we begin to discuss or to begin to characterize where we come from and what we represent as a people. Very, very critical thing. My answer, as always, will be is to come on a need. I have come here exactly the same way that Golda Meir did when Israel was being formed. She came to America to speak to the Jews in America to tell them about their duty and obligation to save the embryo state of Israel. Today, I have come here to do exactly the same thing, to tell that you hold the key to unlock, in fact, to unchain Biafra from the damnation called Nigeria. You have what it takes. I'm not talking about the whole of America, I'm even talking about those of you who are here in this very hall today. Got it. You have what it takes to set us free. And if you fail to apply yourselves to that, if you fail this very historic opportunity to not only set the record straight, but to make sure you educate our people from the zoo that is called Nigeria, then we are finished as a race. Chukwa Abiyama will visit upon the Igbo people something so horrendous that you regret ever being born. On the 22nd of this very month, something very, very magnificent will happen. I think I'm going to have to abandon my written speech to talk to you from the heart. Because this very year is the year of the blood moon. It happened last year, it will happen again this year. And the epicenter of these very lunar activities in Biafra land, these we are confirmed by astronomers in Europe. It signifies and portends very goodwill for our people only if we can grab the opportunity to do so. Some of us forget who we are, that is why we are stuck in America. Our children are being killed back home, everybody said there. Buhari can do whatever he likes. In fact, I was going to tell some of you are just the Buhari. And if I have an opportunity, they say guns are free in America. If you give me a gun now, anybody who voted as the Buhari, I'll shoot the person dead, I'll go to prison. It's the worst that ever happened to us as a people. For very long, we've been suffering and in pain. The fact that we travel all over the world, and as it was rightly pointed out, we are blessed by the Most High to go Biyama, doesn't mean we must abdicate our responsibility to those who are less fortunate than ourselves who are back home. Suffering and in pain. Nothing is functioning. That is a mantra everybody speaks all the time. Who is going to stop us from being killed by our suffering soldiers? Who is going to make the impossible become possible in the lives of our people? If not you, if not those of you in America, who's going to do it? Is it those of us in Europe? We don't have anything. You are the ones with every opportunity. You are the ones that has everything. Why is it impossible for you to understand that so much is expected from you? Because whoever much is given, much is expected. If America doesn't come to serve us, who's going to serve us? Just please remind me. You have your beautiful cars and your lovely houses and you have your parties and they are so magnificent to behold that you must try and go one step further. You must ask about those who want to save you, those who want you to return home. Why don't you come to America and learn and then go back home to apply judiciously all those things you have learned abroad. The only way to do it is one way. It is to support what we are doing. We are all dear friends, everybody is. If you are from Izon, we can call it job. From the Shekiri, from the Robo, it doesn't matter if you from a Ghana. The person that gave birth to Ghana people is an Igbo woman. The first of all, gave birth to Ghana people. When we talk about Igbo group and gathering, we don't include the Ghana people. Igeda is not there. Eh? Even the people of Ibibio that we build or conquer from, we have a conquer in our various communities. It's not original to Igbo people. We got it from Ibibio people. But as soon as we discuss Igbo, we exclude them. One thing binds us together, as I said before. As long as your mother ties two piece wrapper, you are a Biafra. You are the descendant of the light. You are a child of heaven. The reason why we exist as a people is to worship to Kikabia and heaven that is number one and number two to bring light to the world. We are the ones that answer it. Light. We are the only people in the whole world who answer the name of the most high, the creator of heaven and earth. We answer to you. We answer what you put. Some will go to church tomorrow and say, we want to praise the Son of God. But some of us here are children of God. Don't we answer what you put? Of course we do. You have Which one. means? You have one here. Exactly. Two. Okay. Oh, yeah. Umu Chineke. Directly descended from heaven. We must fulfill our destiny, this obligation we go to mankind, or else, mark my words today, the evil race will be created from the face of the earth. They will be wiped away clean. 
The Jews managed to come back after 2,000 years because they had one thing in common, their religion. We have nothing. Some go to Assemblies of God Church, some go to Roman Catholic, some go to Seventh Adventist Church. There is nothing binding us together apart from that blood which we have in organizations. That is all. If we miss this golden opportunity, we are bound to suffer in time to come. I have not come, of course, with love all of you. I like the fact that you are doing very well, all of you in America. But there is one more thing that you must do. You must come out to support what you are doing. We need guns and we need bullets. I know we love life so much. That's why we need the human being, a man, a man. That's why we don't kill. To kill somebody is very difficult for us. So to ask the gathering of people, people, please, that we need guns and bullets and weapons will be very, very difficult for you to digest. But without it, I was able to baron us. They have succeeded in planting a crotch in Nemo State. One big, massive problem we have. The same thing that happened to me in Aquaibo. If they succeed in triangulating, because in life everything is in triangle, if they get away, if they take you, know, if they take you, what happens? I got them, we are finished as a people. Completely gone as a race. You will come back home, you know, the way to your father's compound, because they are coming. Pokeram is everywhere in their compound. They will overrun us in a matter of minutes, and the world will not talk about it, because mankind is afraid of Biafra. They believe that Biafra, after Biafra comes, the world will come to an end. Ask any wise man, they will tell you. They believe that Biafra is the last miracle. Once it comes, life will come to an end as we know it. But we know that they are wrong. We know that this very promise that was made to us a long time ago, only if we go back to the Most High, we will realize our potential, must be seen in our lifetime. Biafra is very old. Those who don't know what Biafra is, I'm a father in place. With B.I. in front of my village, you have Biafra. So we know who we are. We are not mistaken about our belief in the irreducibility of Biafra as a nation, as a people, as those who have come here to bring life to the world. That's what we answer in Indian person. There is no place you go to Mujuku and say, I don't know, you're not even the Jews answer Mujuku. I know, I'm sure you know what it means. We have a place in Enugu called, what's the name again? It's called Oma and Yibu. Is that correct? The children of the kingdom of heaven. I don't know what else you need. We shouldn't be here in the first place. We should be in our land developing it, building it. So I can travel all the way from my village and I can go to maybe travel to, to Amansi and then go back the same night. We have the potential in this room to do it. Only if we can rise up to that very challenge. That is why the same way that Israel stood against every God is how the Afra is going to stand. Not just as a pinnacle to the survivability of the people who are downtrodden, people who we have pressed down for very long that as a willing testimony to the kindness and the goodness of the most touchful God. I thank you all very much for listening, and I do hope in time to come that you bring yourself to appreciate what we are doing. Thank you very much. Oh, we have in the last week. Because order, order, order. Give, give, give them audience, please. Oh, we have in the last week. Who know? I'm the one. We have in the last week. I'm people in the middle. Okay, I'm Joe Connor from Amuimu, from Houston. Just coming up from Houston, you know. So, I'm not Joe. I'm not too fortunate. I'm not too direct. You know, I'm going to take a seat below. The web that I have found to take care of the mother, the father. Now I have to from the ground. I was thinking about it, gave me sleepless nights to compensate the see how do Kahamu nights all right. You know, because I'm I'm on Nami, I've sat in the US Army for 18 years. I wrote to the rank of major. I only have for compensation. Only a more here for life. I can take care of you. You know, you don't like it. Biafra is a good thing. It's a, it's a genuine thing. Only it's a good thing, but only more because I get a same name now now people don't know. Thank you very much. Um, in answer to your question, everybody associated with those that died were taken care of by the leaders of the Africa okay. until the end of time. We are very huge we're all over the world, in over 88 countries and counting. We are many. Any of you that saw the video from our back on the 30th of May, and what I was talking about remembering those that died, we do that every year, incidentally. With the crowd that came, hasn't been seen in our land 
ever, ever, even when the Pope came, our people came out to honor the dead. We are many, we are going to take care of them. And when we bury them, you see how good we are. The promise, we're not just, we're not just saying it. We believe in, on the Ubiwan Nawal also, we implement it. We just don't say it, we do it, make it happen. And on that very day, you will see. We are going to honor them, we are going to take care of the families. Now, one for If I skip to your story. I have never heard about um, you or your program. So the first thing I said when I came in here is about honoring our fallen soldiers. We were talking, and um, we say, I did say that what is wrong with Tim Tebow is has a spiritual undertone that I have never. I, I use the example of the Jewish people, the American people. You know, I'm so happy to hear about what you say you're doing. I know about the Oji River. I don't know what is being done there for the soldiers. But I'm very confused. My confusion stems from what, maybe I didn't understand, what exactly is the objective of your movement, number one? You made mention of uh, the 22nd of this month. Yes. What will happen? I didn't get to hear exactly what he is to get many between the second of uh, this month. And then the third one is that, did you make mention of you, we need arms and stuff? I don't, I yes, yes, that. we do. So yeah. I, need, I really need to understand these three things. Okay. Know, please, thank you. Let me start on the last one, please. From, from what the person I've got asked. On Sunday, the 30th of August, our people came out of our mission to evangelize, to preach to others about the need for us to get there from. And um, on the orders of Buhari, they were shot dead. And you will know that B2B in 2005, 2006, ordered the army to do something at the same place in America when members of the massacre were shot to pieces because they felt that you know you can kill them. Igbo people don't care, which is a matter of fact. We don't care about each other, that is the truth. We may gather once in a while to eat, to party, and to drink. But when our people die, nobody cares about them, nobody talks about them. Now, from that, we now know that the best way to defend yourself is to be armed. Because Boko Haram is everywhere in the zoo, police in the zoo, I army mean in the zoo, navy. Zoo, by the way, is Nigeria. That's what we call it, it's a zoo. The place are full of wild animals. Only those who are not sensible will understand that there is no name like Nigeria before the white man came. I don't even want to call you nigger. Then I'll call you nigger. Because when you say I, I'm a Nigerian, it means you're a nigger from a nigger area. That's what the meaning of it. Niger is English word for nigger. In Latin, it is nigger. In France, it is called Niger. It means the same thing. And I can't be a nigger. I come from Biafra. The place that's older than Britain. That's number one. So we need guns and we need bullets. And those of you in America will give it to us. Very, very important. And also, on the 22nd of this month, something will happen. It's called the Blood Moon. Most of you don't know that in 1967, before the war started, there was a Blood Moon as well. Are you aware of that? It comes once in a while. There was Blood Moon in 67. There will be Blood Moon this year because after this year, we are going to be free no matter what happens. Because if we don't get the effort, everybody will have to die. As simple as that. I will not joking. I, I came from back home for this convention. I stay in Biafra land. I don't stay in London anymore. I stay in Biafra land. I don't want people to underestimate what we are fighting and the type of adversaries that we're facing. Very, very critical. And on the issue of the remembrance of our people, we do that every blessed year on the 30th of May, every year. It's very, very huge all over the world. All over the world. Does anyone have our magazine somewhere? Perhaps you can give to the chair and to our dear sister so they can see the type of things that we do all over the world. Very, very critical. There is only one thing missing, is the involvement and the support of World War Congress. If I remember very, very well, this very important body was set up to do exactly what IPOB is doing today. Am I wrong? Yeah, no. Am I wrong? Please correct me. World War Congress was set up to ensure that all these senseless extrajudicial killings of our people should stop. Is that not correct? Is that not correct? Yes, is it continuing or not? Yes, they are still killing us. They are deporting us from Lagos, burning our shops, 
all over the place. Our people being rendered useless and homeless. No appointment from Buhari. The oil and gas comes from our land. And we say we are proud to be Nigerians. It's not just possible. It just cannot happen. Thank you very much. Thank you for answering the question. Thank you. All right, two more questions, please. Okay, I like them. One more. One more. My name is uh, Udemi. I have listened to you very carefully. Uh, there appeared to be some kind of a civility when you began your speech. But after a while, I sense more or less, well, this is what you have to do. If you don't do it, then what comes after it? My question to you now is that, uh, have you ever thought about the effects of what, what we're trying to incite? And mic. number two, you know the society where we are in. Here's the mic. Where do we go from there? I understand we have concern. Is it possible for the concern to be addressed objectively? We can always reach wherever we want to go. Your name, I'm sorry, your name, please. Udeme um, Zoe. Thank you very much. Um, I started with humility, and I believe I did with humility. If you're evil, if you're Biafran, I'll respect you and I'll submit to you in whatever way, shape, or form that you need me to. I believe in elders and I respect them very much. When I see somebody who's older than me, even by a year, I shake them with two hands. I am never ever rude to anyone. But if you're a Nigerian, I'll be rude to you. That means you are not sensible. It means you're not educated. A white man cannot leave Europe to come to Africa to create a country for me. It's impossible. If I go to Europe to create a country, would they let me? Do you think they will let me? Can I go to Europe and create a country? I say, this is Port Hokere, I have a Port Harcourt. I say, this is uh, Port uh, Odenitia. Is that possible? <laughs> I'm asking a simple question. Is it difficult to understand? No. As long as you are an indigenous person, you know who you are. You have been to school, some of you hold your doctorate degrees here. You cannot come from Nigeria. You cannot come from Nigeria. Your grandfathers are older than your country. Is that possible? How can your grandfather be older than your country? Where you claim you come from? It's not possible. As long as you're a dear friend, you have my love and you have my respect, I will honor you anytime, any day. If you stand in front of me and say you're a Nigerian, you have something else coming. I will never respect you because it means you're not sensible. Simple as that. The, about the implications, we are dead already. They say here there is down this fear no fall. If you want to live in humiliation, <coughs> Fine for the person. As for me, death is better than being humiliation. Thank you. Here's the other. My name is Chief Sorry Bokor. I need to work for me. I need to work for me. I need to work for me. I really thank you for showing us because if not because we have a limited time, I have like one and one of questions to ask you, but I'm gonna ask a few questions. Someone that just mentioned about people who die as a result of this cause. What kind of benefit? And you answer it. A lot of us are here, and you wanted us to give you the support. And you mentioned guns, you mentioned arms and ammunition. And I also understand that if we make ourselves really open, let's assume we're in Nigeria, you understand the type of cause it is, and that is prison. One question is. If I go to Nigeria and I've already identified and made myself known and everybody knows, I'm not the nice the father, I'm not the beer friend. And I get arrested to face treason. What are the modalities you put in place at least to save my life? What kind of security do you have on ground? Secondly, you talk about being recognized by 88 countries. And at the same time, you wanted us to support you with guns and arms and ammunition. I have seen a whole lot of wars, both in media and somewhere else, 
when people are fighting or when people are getting ready to fight, they have some international backings. What kind of international backing do you have? What kind of international backing do you have for you as a person at Biafra to achieve this goal? Or do we just have only the recognition without the backing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, on your very first question, what happens if you go home to agitate? What I can say to you is that I'm sorry. you can never ever be arrested. Never. Because what you're fighting for, what we are fighting for, is a universally recognized way of setting people free. I'm sure that some of you here are very conversant with the declarations on the rights of indigenous people, is that correct? That allows us to go and fight for Biafra. That's exactly what we are doing. Of which the zoo called Nigeria is a signatory to it via the AU. So that solves that problem. Secondly, in terms of the war supporting us, it doesn't matter if you give us the guns we need or not, we are going to fight anyway. Because I also won't let go. They need your oil, they need your gas. They are imagine. They don't do anything. They don't do anything in their lives. It's only for to depend on oil and gas. So it is either you live as a slave or you fight to be free. The choice is yours. We've chosen to fight to be free than to live as slaves. And in terms of recognition from the countries, we have not done enough to warrant countries to come out in the open, for example, Israel, to serve as a you. What have you done for yourselves? If you go to bank to borrow money, at least the bank manager will ask you how much you have, how much are you investing in the business before they give you the loan. Is that not correct? If you want to go and buy a house of, say, there is what, $100,000, you have to be a deposit of maybe $30,000. Is that true or not? Is that true or not? Yes, yes, yes. What have we done? Has World War Congress ever stood up before to issue a communique saying that our people are dying in vain and there must be something done about it? The answer is no. So I was like, I keep killing us. These are the things we expect you to do because you have influence. You are in America, of all places. You can petition your congressmen, you can petition your senators. You know what to do. You came here and all of you are all successful people. Self-made millionaires, some of you. I'm sure you know what to do. If you do that, Britain will be free. The Jews had the same problem. There were Jews in America and they founded the liberation of Israel. I don't see why you should be any different. Thank you. Hmm. Good. Um, I, I want to uh, reiterate and say again that I, I don't know how to quantify the fact that I'm here today for this convention. And I've enjoyed interactive discussion uh, of uh, this talk until now. I'm telling you, I don't know. Questions were asked, questions have been put in place. In fact, the last question was asked by my brother over there. And I saw a majority of people saying, well, you cannot tell us how it's going to integrate 70 people if this is going to be in place. So I'm saying, I don't understand. Um, you have given a mandate, you have given a date, and you say it's do or die. So I don't know. You're not going to die. <laughs> because I know too, I know too that uh, America would not, America would have not been too, like this today if Martin Luther did not stand his ground and go to war and fight for you know peace, peace, and that's why people like me is here today to enjoy. But I want to ask you all that: How can we, you know, at this interim time, you know, go into this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, eh, hey, it's like, yes, it's like it's talking like I and I got walk. My heart is just like this. So what is going on? Please. Okay. Yes. Okay. The fact of the matter is that we have to speak the truth. It may not sound very palatable, but as our brother, Dr. George Verizzi, he spoke earlier about truthfulness and honesty. I believe in honesty and in being very truthful. I am not a politician, so I don't know how to turn things around. So you have to forgive me. The fact of the matter is this. Our sir will not let go of oil and gas until the fight. Don't let go. 
And as long as that oil and gas continues to flow, you remain a slave forever and ever. One or two of you may go to Abuja and survive. The rest of us are going to have to suffer. Yes. It's not something so what do you do to stop them? Okay, please. Please, okay. please stop them. Uh, Thank you. Because we, we have other things on the program. We need to move yeah. on. Because when they, let me again thank you for the effort you are making on behalf of all of us, Igbos, and thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But I have a question to ask. Mm. Because after a while, we're going to start thinking. I don't want to be able to accept the fact that the change in them will make us different. They will see. As you see, I'm imagining. As we stand here today, there are at least seven states that are predominantly Igbos. And in the context of Nigeria, none of them have reported to us that they never received the federal allocation. And as I see, even you and I here, we have not agitated in the state we come from to make things better for our people. And we are going to the federal. Tim O'Neill, when he was Speaker of the House in the United States, said all politics are no what? No no you see, when we say evil states, evil people are doing extraordinarily well, and they will even do better if they stay on their own. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is about that if we separate, we become great. Let us use the latest country created by the United Nations called the South Sudan. At the inception of this very small country, which is very large, it was all about the excitement. But now people are what? The issue is not whether we answer Biafra or Nigeria. The issue is what are we doing for ourselves and them. And I know you said you live back home and you came here. And I don't know what passport you traveled with. Because I know on the international level, unless the rule has changed, there is no country known in the United Nations as one, yeah. Biafra. You must have come here through a recognized nation, passport, or you may have smuggled in. So my brother, my question to you is, before we start talking about what the houses are doing to us, have we talked about what we're doing to clean our house? Thank you very much. Order. There is nothing. I am sorry to disappoint some of you. Igbo is not a nation. Igbo is a group of people. And there is a name in Igbo land that points to this very fact. It is where you are wrong, sir. With the respect. There is a place called Agluzi Igbo. Who says Agebendi Igbo? Is that correct or not? Agluzo Igbo. Who gave you that name? Who says Agebendi Igbo? That's number one. Number two, before. 1900, there is no map in the world containing Igbo on it, but that was Biafra. I give you historical facts and scientifically verifiable proof which you can refer to. Igbo and Igbo is a collection of people. That's a fact. If I travel to Ebony, I can't hear what they're saying in a back link. If I travel to Osaka, I can't hear what they're saying. You said that someone from Osaka is Igbo. But somebody from Idoma and Zambia, but they have a care earlier for Igbo. So, what is your criteria for determining who is Igbo and who isn't? That is where the fundamental flaw is coming from. I leave you with that very simple question and that very name. Agulesa, go, Ebendibo. Very, very important to understand that, sir. That is number one. And number two is this that is a fact, that is something that we are missing when it comes to Nigeria. A very fundamental fact that we are missing. They never loved you and they will never love you. Nigeria will never ever love you no matter what you do. We have done our best at home. What they do is to impose people on you. They impose people, if you doubt me now, let me, sir, please. Because you give them let me, let me, please, let, let me just give you one simple proof. 
every industry in Biafra land is shut down. Am I lying? That's correct. Ceramic stone wire is closed down. Golden Guinea is closed down. Mbaos or Yumi is closed down. Liverpool has just left Abana. Is that not correct? BZ has the whole gone. Niger Sem is closed down. Um, MNIT is gone. Have you ever asked yourself why they shut all these companies down? They shut them down because if you're a governor like Mbakwe or Dr. Emmanuel Obara, if the Awasa man sees that your manifesto and your governance, I'm sorry to say, even at Inanambra in Gige, that was when he was moved because they knew Gige was doing very, very well. If you go and have any plan to build any industry that employs more than 50 people, you will never win an election. Never, ever, ever. They want us to migrate to America. They want us to go to Europe. They want us to be slaves to them. And they use fear and intimidation. And we are not going to have that anymore. Thank you very much. Okay, Bingo, please, please, okay. please, 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 Bingo, this is... I don't want to take up more time. No, 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 please. No, please. I'm going to recognize the chairman of Wadi Congress and the one for George Jolly Okay, and, and in that order, because be patient with us. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I what in the Hugo Congress was an advocacy yeah. organization. Yes. We are not an activist yeah. organization. Ideas of our people come here. We synthesize it. Look at it. Look at the whole picture and issue a position as to what we think yes. we should be thinking about. We are the fight. What was the good in this? Important topic. I am a head here. It was more than just a statement. We go back, look at all these presentations, look at our positions, and then we decide on what we pursue and how we pursue those objectives. Let us work and attract. Yeah. Yeah. I think we agree on that. Yes, we. Where many of you are going to be? I want to know where they are. Let yeah. us calm down. Yeah. I am the way you are coming. I have the man is going to come in. Let us all examine our options and then we will determine what will be the best approach to handle this particular presentation. And I say this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. 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 My question is going to be, what is your plan for our people who are now inextricably linked in other parts of Nigeria? That's the question. But I thank you for your courage. It's not easy. Yes, it's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our people in other parts of um, the zoo will have to come back home. If they want to stay where they are, then they're more welcome to do so. No. The same, the, 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 same way, the same way that we are scattered all over the world today, the same thing happened to the Jews. 
they were under conquest. You know, sometimes I wish that the first wave of Islamic attack would have been successful, but unfortunately they died in Idoma. I'm sure some of you are aware of it. They tried to conquer us before, and they failed in Idoma. And they will try again this time around, and they will succeed if we sleep. Anywhere you are in the world, if you're comfortable, you stay there. But there are those who are not comfortable, then they have to come back home. Today, Israel has relations with Egypt. There are Jews all over the place. Nothing has happened to them. One thing that Biafra will do for all of us is to give you dignity and sense of purpose to exist as a human being, to fulfill your dream. The Jews were in Europe saying exactly what you guys are saying today. Oh, leave us, we are here, we're very comfortable. After all, the Prime Minister of Austria is Jewish. We are, oh, leave us, we are fine. We have cars, we have houses. But Hitler came and killed most of them. No matter what you do, as an evil person, without Biafra, you will be insecure. Biafra is your only guarantee to have safety and some measure of comfort. I want to ask the question, they keep asking me, this was all the time, which passport do you travel with? Before the zoo called Nigeria was created, which passport do people travel with? Makes no sense to me at all. What we are trying to say is this. Some of you don't know what Biafra is, and that pains me so much. Some do, but some don't. There is bound to be sacrifice. Israel lost six million. Biafra will lose more than eight million the next time around. We lost nearly six before. Wow. Because we waited for the war to be brought to us. We did not prepare. We brought fought any war before. We have never conquered anybody, nobody conquered us. That was the problem we had as a people. Chukwu Abiyama kept fighting for us. God was fighting for us all the time, protecting us. We became very, very complacent. That is why now we are comfortable abroad. Why can't we stay in our kids with starting this and develop it? Rather than seeing how much on the road all the time, watching Gary to to um, where's the place you him to when you go to the airport? What's it called again? A new, isn't it? That's about using a motor now. But nothing else. Very sad indeed. So we are going to make them feel very comfortable. We want to come back and come back. We want to be in America. Anywhere you want to be, you can stay there. As long as you're comfortable. But that will not stop us from pursuing Biafra. Impossible. Nothing will. Thank you. Grief, please. No stop. Just a question. Thank you. I want to thank you for the courage, the way you articulate the cause of evil people. But I also want to say, as in, uh, I am, I had a this way, but every somebody called it, they watch me. my neighbor in town, listen, who tried to do the same thing. You know, when I was in town, they are just us. Okay, because I want to have a little bit of a man, a man mistake, when you live in the end. So if they say me and I, if you don't know, I don't know what to do. And what I want you to concentrate on, because you have a good idea, but you can't just jump into like something to confront somebody when you are not prepared. You got to start. If you don't have the question, I'm going to cut you off. Yeah. Yes. What preparation are we doing? As a matter of fact, giving advice, I want us to prepare first before we double into trying to face the enemy that we cannot defeat. Because what happened to us in the past, they repeat itself. So if we are prepared, it will happen. So give us preparation plans. Thank you very much. It's to by coming here to go to Congress. It's about progression. Because I'm sure some of you will say, Onegu no gonna put here. The other men here are not here. We will get help. I'm sure that's what you will say. So we've come here to tell you. So you won't say you will not talk. And also to benefit from the advice which is bound to come our way. I'm sure there will be um, lots of ways for us to interact as time goes on. And then you have any advice to give us. The last question, George. Nicole, Nicole. Get up, George. Mm. Oh, you're yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, you have a question of my card. Yeah, you have a question of my card. You know, I'm going to touch by the chair on which you work. We are worried about Congress. You come and give us here. And we'll see them. We'll discuss it. And then advise you, whoever. You are not the first. And the year will last. Okay? So, we have to be able to answer. So, uh, like uh, after me, that is a very thing that she We have to get, get all the things I see together. We should speak with my wife.
man and local single or radio. They are here. Because can everybody have a seat? Gentlemen. <laughs>